to ask you this. <laughs> speak for just a few moments this morning. I won't be before you terribly long. Uh, and I really want to share with you by way of review something that's fundamental to the Christian faith. Every Christian, I think, uh, almost every Christian would, would just instinctively know this. Uh, but sometimes we get away from the staples of what Christianity is. And I, I want to ask you a question this morning, uh, and I don't mean to be, uh, my heart is not to rebuke anyone, but just to provide information and to re provide a review. What about your church attendance? What about your church attendance? 30 years ago when I got saved, when people came to church, they came to church every single week. They, they, they didn't have, we didn't have, at least in the church that I was in, people didn't come one week and, and then a month later come again. Every single week you saw those people. If you go back 50 years ago, it was even more so then. If you go back to the time of the Jews, their entire life revolved around the synagogue. And even today, I think in, in true Bible Christianity, the Christian's life should revolve around the church. When Sister Lincoln and I, when we, we bought land to build a house several years ago, we made sure we found land around the church. When we were members of a church, before we ever started pastoring, we made sure that we were in church all the time. We didn't miss any services. But now we, here we are just 30 years later, and the norm, the norm is for Christians not to come to church every week. And again, my heart is not to rebuke anyone this morning, but to give you information how that it seems like it's no harm, no foul, but it's very hurtful to your walk, and it could ultimately devastate your walk if you miss the wrong service. Had I missed this service today, I would have also missed my blessing right there. And I wonder how many blessings God has for us as individuals that we miss simply because we're in, in the wrong place at the right time. In the book of Hebrews, we have some instruction beginning Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> and I'm going to begin reading with verse 22. And the first two or three verses, I'm just going to read the first phrase of the verse because I, I want to make an impact. He says, verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of the faith. 20, verse 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Verse 24, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Let's ask the Lord's blessing on the sermon this morning. Father, we just come to you realizing nothing can be done. The right tone cannot be hit. Lord, accept your Holy Spirit work in me and through me. And so, Lord, I yield myself to you this morning. I'd ask you that you'd speak to your people in love. And Lord, that you'd help us to understand how important it is in the hour in which we live not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Father, we pray it in Jesus' name and we thank you. Amen. And amen. And again, I'll title the message, What About Your Church Attendance? The scripture tells us that we are, we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And so much the more, we ought to pay so much more attention to it as we see the day approaching. He's talking about the day that is known as the resurrection of life. He's talking about that day that Jesus comes back, steps on a cloud, and calls the church dead and living up to meet him in the air. 
We know you can just look at the newscast. You can just look at current events and you know that we're right at the time. I mean, the, the, the entire world now is coming into a condition like that in Sodom and Gomorrah. Not just with homosexuality, but with violence, with wars, with rumors of wars, ethnos against ethnos, meaning racial strife and conflict. It's not just in one land, it's across all the nations now. This spirit of anarchy, this antichrist spirit has, has settled upon the people. We know that the coming of Jesus Christ is very near, but yet sadly in Christendom, we've had this shift where most people are very erratic in assembling themselves together. They, they, they're hit and miss. And the problem is it looks like it has no impact on you, but, but the, the issue is that you don't realize the impact that it is having. It's a very slow process of backsliding, of becoming lukewarm. Do you know that there was a time in the church in the United States that when a revival was put together, that revival would always last seven days? <laughs> you can't have that anymore because the saints don't come out for three days. Amen. Amen. It used to be revival, a seven-day revival would catch on fire and the preacher would have to stay there for 30 days. Sometimes for 45 days, the revivals would go with the Spirit of God moving mightily within the meetings, but no longer does that happen. Now, we know God hadn't changed. <laughs> He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, but we as Christians, we've allowed this snowflake mentality to come upon us that we can no longer press the flesh, push against the flesh, and reach out for that which is spiritual. But the scripture says that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. That's, that's talking about the, the church. That's talking about the corporate body. Because listen, we draw strength one from another. Just seeing you here. Just seeing you here. I get strong from just seeing you. I'm going to tell you something. Now, I haven't told anybody this. But when I see people in the congregation that have white hair, that makes me stronger. <laughs> I'm serious. When I see people that are elder to me and they're still pressing for Jesus, that tells me, brother, you need to keep on pushing in. And, and it's in the church that we exhort one another. We, we, we fellowship together. We learn to love one another. All of that happens within the corporate body. But, but now we... Oh, please understand, I don't want to rebuke anybody. It is not unusual to have people that come in one minute late and leave one minute early so they don't have to talk to nobody. And they're in the church, but they're not of the church. <laughs> they don't even know the people's names. <laughs> Saints, this is a time as these last days come. Here's, I'm not a prophet, but here's, my, here's what I think. As soon as this president goes out of office, there's going to be a kickback against the church. There's going to be a powerful, against anything that's of God, there's going to be a, a, a pushback against it. And this is a time that we need each other more than we've ever needed each other before. It's the days right before Jesus comes back. In the last days, there shall be perilous times, dangerous times. And the Holy Spirit says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. Some of us already have the habit of, yeah, well, you know, I, I just, I got to bed late last night. And so I won't be going to church today. I was at the club late. And we don't realize, but slowly our, we're backsliding. And just because you come into the building does not mean you came to church. You got to come right into his presence. You got to come right to where everything else vanishes and it's just you and God. That's the church. But nine times out of ten, that doesn't happen at home. It can, but very few times. But the reality is most Christians don't hardly read the Bible at home. Don't pray at home. It's in the church that all those fundamentals are really reinforced and cause us to push forward in the things of God. Not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together as the manner of some is. And so much more. 
as you see that day approaching, the Holy Spirit is telling us we're going to need this corporate assembly more and more and more right before those final days before the Lord comes. And you cannot deny we're in those days. You know, all through the Bible, there are passages that tell us not to be apathetic in the things of God. If you look back in history to the days of Noah, God told Noah that the end of mankind has come before me and I want you to build an ark. It was 120 years that, that he told him before the flood actually came. And Noah was preaching, there's a flood coming. There's a flood coming. And everybody said, well, there's no rain. Just like right now, within the hearts of many Christians, there may be that thought, well, where is the sign of his coming? All things continue as they did from the beginning. But here's the thing about God, and you got to catch this. Once he begins to move, he'll roll right over you. When the rain started to fall, honey, it was too late. <laughs> it, it was too late. By the time the rain started to fall, the ark was closed. And only eight people survived that devastation. Jesus as well, he gave us the parable. He said the kingdom of God, speaking of this last day church, is like ten virgins. Five of them was wise and five of them was foolish. Now that's a 50-50 split, but he was being very generous. He said the foolish virgins, they took no oil in their, wine, in, in, in their lamps. They looked like externally like the other five. They looked like the ones who had the oil on the inside. But it wasn't until they heard the shout of the bridegroom that they realize, I don't have what it takes. I, I don't have what, what I need in my life. And you know, they came to the, to the wise virgin and said, give us of your oil. They said, not so. Go to them that, that sell and buy for yourself. Here's, here's what the parable is saying is that they waited till the last minute and it was too late. See, you can't wait until you see things start happening. Huh? When, when, when devastation hits your life, that's not the time to pray. You need to be already prayed. You don't see Daniel praying in the lion's den. But you see him praying hard before th that trouble ever hit. And so we're in a time now, we see the end coming upon us. We know that we're in the hour that it just simply can't continue this way in the downward spiral that it's been in. And we know Jesus is coming back, but many times we don't take seriously our weekly attendance. When Jesus' resurrection occurred, when he got up from the grave, he came to meet with the disciples on Sunday morning. Read your Bible, it's in there. On Sunday morning, which the Bible refers to as the first day of the week, he came, the disciples were there, he appeared in the midst of them, and he began to speak to them. As a matter of fact, let's just read this in the scripture. Uh, John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Beginning with verse 19, it says this. Then the same day at evening being, here it is, the first day of the week, that Sunday morning, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, where the disciples were assembled, there was an assembly there. there. There was a corporate assembly there. For fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Now, before I go on, let me tell you what's going to happen. The disciples are there assembled together. They're in a corporate setting. But Thomas, who is called Didymus, he didn't go to church that week. <laughs> he wasn't there. He had a conflict on his schedule. He, he had something else that he was doing that, that he put at a higher priority. And so he, when Jesus appeared in the midst, Thomas was not there. And when he had said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. I Meaning he showed them the scars that he took from the cross. Appeared right in the midst on Sunday morning. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them, peace be unto you as my father hath sent me, even so send I you. 
He gave them the instruction, I'm, I'm sending you. But Thomas wasn't there. He didn't get the instruction. He didn't hear what Jesus said. And listen, when we miss church, you may think, well, I, I, I was there last week and I was there next week. You missed that week. <laughs> Because the Lord is speaking every single week. Every time his word is opened in this kind of a setting, the, the Lord is speaking. And it's important that we hear, man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of God. And, and if, you're, if your salvation is such, please understand, I'm not rebuking anyone. I'm trying to give you information. If your salvation is such that you're hit and miss with your church attendance, you can be sure you don't have everything that God intended for you. You are not where God wanted you at. There's information that you have missed and it's causing a drag on your, on your walk, on your Christian walk. Jesus said, peace be unto you as my father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, number three, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Thomas wasn't there. If Jesus is breathing on anybody, I want to be there. I don't want to miss that. And notice Jesus didn't go to their house because I said, well, I study at home. Well, Jesus didn't go to their house and breathe on Thomas. Thomas didn't get no breath. I, I want everything that the Lord has for me. I've watched over the years. I've watched over the years in this fellowship. Years ago, years ago, we, we broke into two services, an early service and a late service. And there were congregation members that just said, you know what, I'm coming to both services because we preach two different messages. They're like, I, I need everything I can get. And I've watched over the years, they have grown in Christ so much more than other people. Not because they come to this church twice, but because they are getting more of the word of God and is having more of an impact on their spiritual man. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. It says, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive the Holy Spirit. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the 12, meaning he was, he was one of the group. He was a Christian. One of the 12 called Didymus was not with them. He forsook the assembling of himself together with the other disciples. And incidentally, on the very next Sunday, Jesus appeared again to them. That's why Sunday is the church day in the modern church because the first two Sundays is when Jesus appeared to the church. It says, the other disciples therefore said unto him, we've seen the Lord. <laughs> They're trying to share what their experience. We saw him, he came back, he breathed on us. He, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm sending you. They tried to tell Thomas everything that happened. <laughs> and Thomas was in the position, give me of your oil. Because he wasn't there to get his own. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my fingers into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, Jesus, when he appeared, the first thing he did was show them his hands and his side, his scar. Thomas needed another verification because he wasn't there. He missed it. And if you read on, I don't have it in my notes, but if you read on, when Jesus appeared, he said, peace unto you to the disciples, and then he rebuked Thomas. And I wonder how much of a rebuke we have in our lives, not, not directly by the Lord speaking to us necessarily, but by our lives not being as smooth as they should be. Hiccups in, in, our, in our marriages, hiccups in our relationship with our employer, simply because we're not in the place that God really wants us to be. We've only went halfway. Forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together. Saints, it is important to come to church. I know we live in a time that, you know, people do whatever they want to. And certainly uh, we're not imposing any kind of mandate on you. We're just telling you what the word of the Lord says. And you have to make your own, your, your own decisions based on the information that you have. But if things turn upside down a year and a half from now, look back at a week and a half from now 
a day and a half from now, look back at your church attendance and see whether there's a, corresponding, a correspondence there. Because when you don't come to church, your marriage can go upside down real fast. Because it takes the Holy Ghost just to keep the both of you in the same house anyway. <laughs> and when you're, when, you're, when you're hit and miss, you're not getting everything that you need to be where the Lord wants you, have, the, wants you at. So Thomas said, except I see the, the, his hands and the nail scars, except I see the hole in his side, I will not believe not realizing, had you not missed the disciples, what you're asking for is exactly what you would already have. What, what you're asking, what you're saying you need is verification. It's already been given. You missed it. It's gone. You missed it. <laughs> you, you see, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing is present tense. Meaning that every week you need to be hearing the word of God. Faith does not come by having heard the word of God. It comes by hearing it every week over and over, even though you read it. I've read the New Testament so many times. I read it and I already know what the next sentence is going to say. I already know the whole story. I mean, I can quote some of it. But that is no excuse not to read it again. <laughs> it means that you got to keep pressing in even when you think you're in. Keep pressing in tighter. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. We were in Bible study in the book of James this past week, and the Lord really touched my heart on, on a scripture there and, and helped me to understand it in a deeper way than I really knew. As I was teaching it, I, I saw it. If you turn to the book of James chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 5, and James is talking about trials, but there's another application here that I think uh, it's important to understand. Verse 5 says, if any, man, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of a sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. That's a pretty strong statement, isn't it? The term wavering, it means unstable or irregular. Like some of our church attendance is very irregular. That's what wavering means. And in the last sentence again, speaking of the wavery person, let not that person, that man, think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. Meaning many times we don't get what we really should get with God because we're irregular in our attendance, in our walk with him. Listen, your church attendance is a picture of the strength of your Christian walk. Let me say it again. Your church attendance is in one of the many indicators of the strength of your Christian walk. If your church attendance is weak, you can be sure your Christian walk is not that strong. But when your church attendance is strong, it's, it's, much, it's a good indication that you've got a stronger Christian walk. Because when a person begins to get weak and backslide, what do they do? They stop coming to church. It's like when your car breaks down. It starts missing before it totally breaks down. <laughs> Again, saints... Our assembly together is of the utmost importance for, do, do you know that God put within the confines of the corporate assembly, he put ministry gifts in that, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers in that to edify, build up the church. And let me just knock this down. I don't care. Somebody said, well, I stay home and I watch Sun Life. That is not the local assembly. That is no excuse for you coming to the local church and sitting down. And coming into the myth because you can't be challenged in your interpersonal relationships on Sun Life Radio or Sun Life TV. I'm not fighting Sun Life. Watch it all you want to except the church time. You need to get up, dress yourself and come into the presence of the Lord. Where you have accountability to a body of believers. You have accountability to a pastor. I know I'm stepping on some toes here this morning. I love Brother Swaggart. I'm not fighting him. But I'm not sitting at home watching him when I need to be in church. 
I can remember in church, people used to go to church every Wednesday night. The whole church. Do you remember Sister Lincoln? Friday, Saturday, and I ain't going there. But, but Wednesday night, every Wednesday night. But now a lot of churches, a lot of churches have closed down Wednesday night and have no service because there are no saints that will come out to support it. Forsake not the assembling of yourself together as the manner of some is. Your church attendance, it is important. You can't see it really on a week by week basis. But if you look back at it over a long period of time, you will see a difference. She ain't on the stage right now. Shekinah's been in church since she was a little bitty baby. When she went to college, she went to church every week. When she came back from college, she, she continued going to church. It becomes a part of your life. You begin to feel, you, you know that this is where I'm spiritually nurtured. And parents, bring your babies to church. Bring them to church. Uh, let, help them to read the Bible at home. Get them involved in the things of God. Because if you don't, <laughs> the devil is out there. He's got his stuff all laid out. He's in the school system teaching them the transgender life. You better have something to reinforce it. Or you're going you're gonna to be in trouble later on. <laughs> the church is our refuge. It's that place where we meet. Where two or three are together, together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. You know, I, I think about my, my son-in-law and, and Shekinah. They come to church uh, every week, uh, active in the ministry. But they have a Bible study in their home. They have an active Bible study in their home, and they're trying to, to make it better. And our whole life is supposed to revolve around the knowledge that's in this book. So that if, if you got a, a, you know, a good golf appointment on Sunday, it needs to be a lower priority. If you've had a rough night on Saturday night, you, you still got to make your way into church on Sunday morning. If you've fallen flat on your face and had a moral hiccup on Saturday night, you need to get up and get into the church on Sunday morning to hear God say, I still love you. I still love you. Forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together. Musicians, would you please return to your instruments? I want to read you one more scripture as they're going to their instruments. Acts chapter 2. This is when the Spirit of God came into the church. This is the initial baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I want to show you something very important. Chapter 2 of the book of Acts. Beginning with verse 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. That means there was a corporate setting. The word all speaks of those that were in that group, that was in that group of people. The people across town, they're not included in all. The people in the next house are not included in all. It, it includes only those that were in that assembly in one place on one accord. And suddenly, me, suddenly means so fast that you would not have time to react, it if, to react to it. If you were not already there, you didn't have time to get there. <laughs> and suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as the rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Meaning that it only filled those that were in the assembly. The guy in the next house over, he didn't get nothing. Only in that house. It filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. The all is only those that were in the assembly. The guy in the next house didn't get nothing. Saints, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. Make it a habit. Make it part of your lifestyle. I get up on Sunday morning. I, I come to present myself into the presence of the Lord. Oh, man, that's tight. D do you know in the book of Job's that there came a day that the sons of God presented themselves before the Lord and even the devil came? <laughs> even the devil came to present himself before the Lord. Thomas wasn't there. <laughs> How about your church attendance? How about your church attendance? I want you to just take what you've heard this morning and just consider it. Consider it if it applies to you, if there's a place in your life that you can make improvements. 
I'm not here to condemn anybody. God knows I love you. I, I don't condemn anyone. I got my own issues I'm dealing with. But I want to see you get everything that you can get from the Lord. Amen. Would you bow your heads, please, all over the room? Father, we just love you this morning. Lord, take these words that I've spoken today and, Lord, anoint them and fix them and place them in the hearts of your people so that it doesn't seem like an open rebuke. God, that they realize that the information is needful for us, that we walk our walk correctly and so much more as we see the day approaching. Father, the world is turning upside down. And this is our only refuge, the secret place of the Most High God. Father, help us to make it a point to not only enter into the physical building, but to enter into your very presence. Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. Come on, stand to your feet all over the room. I don't know what your response is this morning to the Lord. But why don't you just right now close your eyes and just lift your hands to heaven and just respond to him. Just respond to him. Lord, I've heard what you said today. Father, help me to line my life up with your word. Help me not to be hit and miss. God, I ask you for conviction upon my heart. Lord, that each, more, each Sunday morning, each Wednesday, Lord, that you would deal with me. That you would instruct me. That you would lead me and guide me. Father, I come to you this morning and I ask you for your help. I ask you for your help. Come on, just ask the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. He loves you. He loves you. He's not angry at you at all. He sent this to be information for you. That you can have more than what you've been getting. You can be in a deeper place with the Lord. He wants to pull you closer and closer and closer to Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you this morning. Oh, Spirit of God, we love you. Thank you, oh God, for your correction. Thank you for chastisement. Thank you for instruction, oh God. Lord, give us of your strength. Give us grace that we might live stronger for you. We want to be in your perfect will. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray this morning and we thank you. Amen and amen. He is a good God. You, you may be seated for just one more moment before I dismiss you this morning. Do you still love me? <laughs> it's never easy to come before God's people and, 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 and give a word like that, but uh, I love you, and, and I'm going to give you whatever the Lord gives me, uh, because I do love you. Um, something that we do from time to time, especially as we receive requests from different people in the audience, is that we open the doors of the church to take in new members. Uh, there are always somebody that's, that's in the, the congregation that may not have made a commitment to this fellowship. And so this morning, I want to ask just very briefly, is there anyone here that uh, wants to join the membership of Christ Unveiled Ministries. Would you raise your hand? Is there anyone? Amen. We see you, my brother. Hallelujah. We see you, my sister, my sister. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're going to ask you, if you would, if you would come and just meet me right down here on the floor. Would you come? I promise I will not embarrass you. Come on, let's get his saints a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Little man, he's joining with mama. I am so thankful that you see Christ and Veil Ministries fit for your membership. And I'd like to take this moment to just make a commitment to you that with everything within us, we will teach you the word of God. We will share the truth of the Bible with you to the extent that we are able. And I'm so glad this morning that you've put your trust in us. And we will be here. You have a pastor that's present. You can talk to your pastor and first lady at any time. We are here for you. And we thank you this morning for joining Christ Unveiled Ministries. And from this moment on, you can consider yourself a member of Christ Unveiled. Hallelujah. Come on, saints. God bless you. We love you. We love you, my sister. God bless you.
Listen, if you're happy in your health, we appreciate the Lord for our sisters and brothers who have now become part of the body of Christ Unveiled Ministries. You know, it's just always a blessing to have somebody come into your family. It's always a celebration when somebody comes into your family. And so we have a reason to be happy this morning. Let's stand to our feet and we'll be dismissed. Most holy and righteous God, we thank you again for allowing us to be in your house one more time. For being in service to you, Lord, we thank you for the word that you sent for us. Help us, Lord, strengthen us, Lord, on those days when we're weak and we just don't feel like coming into your house. Lord, help us to get up and assemble ourselves together with our brothers and our sisters. Give us a desire, Lord, to be more, to want to be more closer to you, Lord, to come into your presence in this place. And God, we give you all the praise and all the glory for your word today. Amen and amen. Praise God. We're dismissed.